can you give us a sense of what liquidity was like prior? Like, how many bids did you see when you put something on a bid list, you know, prior to the crisis and today? And is that liquidity worse, you know, in the RMBS market today, partly just because it is a smaller size market than, say, auto? This is the part of the panel where I feel very old because I start using expressions like in olden times. <laughs> um, but uh, I think, uh, look, I, I think that liquidity is definitely fractured across securitized assets relative to what it was. I don't want to pick just on RMBS. Um, you know, I think CMBS liquidity, for example, is, is very different um, than it was pre-crisis. So, you know, pre-crisis, I think it was, you know, it was fairly straightforward to sell, you know, a billion bonds. Um, you know, on relatively short notice or, or much more. And, and even during the financial crisis, right, when spreads were much, much wider, um, you know, you saw, you know, the feeding frenzy over the maiden lane liquidations, for example, right? You could sell billions of dollars of very esoteric securities in relatively short order with very tight covers. Um, and, you know, the, the street was willing to position risk because the bid offers were there and, and the overall, you know, buyer base was there. Um, you know, you fast forward to today, I think liquidity is down significantly really across securitized assets. And, and it's hard to finger any one particular uh, contributing factor. I think that, uh, you know, in the ABS market, I would, I would argue, and, and CRT market for that matter, I'd argue that Trace has not been good for liquidity. Um, but I think also, you know, the lack of uh, the lack of trust in, in RMBS and homogeneity in RMBS has made it, um, you know, difficult to get liquidity there. You know, again, I think the documents need to be uh, improved significantly, and uh, you know that that is, uh, you know, part of it. I do think that one of the perks of the sector being so uncompelling right now is that I've gotten to skip reading a lot of 400-page legal documents <laughs> to, um, you know, figure out whether I want to invest. I think if spreads were wider, you know, would have to do more work on that. But I do think, uh, you know, the fact that people have such distrust of what's lurking in the documentation, and there isn't a lot of standardization. Um, you know, leads me to conclude two things. One, that a lot of people aren't reading the documents still, um, but they, we need to do a lot more work on, on the documentation. It's a complex problem. It's, it's a problem, but I think that there's, a, you know, there's a, a sort of a very defined reason that we have it, and, and a lot of it stems from, you know, regulation, good, bad, or otherwise. I think, I mean, the, the dealer community has been um, greatly cut back in terms of not only the types of securities that they can own, you know, meaning lower investment grade or non-investment grade or, or defaulted, right. um, that, you know, it's, it's very challenging to, to, you know, own one of those bonds even briefly, um, you know, with, without having to pay a pretty serious capital charge. Secondly, and sort of it, they're directly related, is, is Trace. So not only is it very expensive to own that bond, but it's going to be pretty tough to make money on that bond because everybody and their brother saw you buy it. <laughs> right, and so they know exactly where it's, it's, it's clearing, right, and where it's trading. You know, especially if it's something that's pretty actively traded. I, th I think the, the, the decline in liquidity was probably one of the biggest unintended consequences of the regulatory reform. And I would argue that it's not affecting our market; it's affecting every market. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. More or less degrees, but if the prior crisis was uh, underwriting and deleveraging, I think the next one will be. Uh, mismatch between the liquidity uh, right. of, of the funding versus versus that of these assets. So I think that's a big deal. However, and here's a little bit of a disagreement. I don't think in particular in PLS, if you magically fix the liquidity issue, you would have a good product. Okay? That was actually the initiative that US Treasury had of let's create a very large one billion dollar, two billion dollar deal, we fix the liquidity and we get going. It never happened because that was not the problem. The problem is investors don't trust the structure. And they vote every day by buying whole loans where they control the structure and they intentionally do the trade-off. By the way, I mean, uh, eventually the market will define what the cost of any of those inefficiencies are, and they should. And you know, I know we are having a healthy debate as to what the price of that uh, inefficiency is. But just going back to the question of liquidity, one thing I don't think any of you touched on, but I do think, and I'm curious your thoughts, is uh, because if you're trying to trade large volumes of paper and you're trying to do that quickly, you do need some level of you know, faith clearly in the system. But also, you need scale, and you need to be able to do that, uh, you know, without having to read 400-page documents. But you also need to be able to analyze information in a pretty systematic way. I don't think any of us have touched on, but you know, 12 years post the financial crisis, it's still pretty hard for a structured product deal to get information in a systematic, 
standardized, clean way that it's consistent. There are a whole bunch of you know uh, new data vendors that have crept up. They're trying to do this, but it's certainly quite far uh, from addressing the entire ecosystem of structured products. And, and I do think that's another thing that will also help uh, in, in pricing and liquidity of, in, in, in the secondary markets. I think it touches on the standardization that John mentioned, right? I mean, yeah. you know, each of these deals can, can have such you know, sort of nuanced differences in either reps or structures or, or the like that it does make it very hard to analyze those things very quickly, which you know, for better or for worse, you know, a four pass through is a four pass through, right? The investors know what it is. There's not a lot of question. They can trade in and out of it. You know, they don't have to take two days to actually read the docs and hope that they read them right, right? I, I, Hopefully yeah. that their, you know, their, their, uh, you know, one year of law school, you know, is carrying the day. And they, <laughs> but that's a great know, example. Exactly. That's a great example school. because so liquidity, I like. They, to they, they're, they're traders. They're not lawyers. That's what yeah. I was going to say. I'm not sure they're talking about. Yeah. But I, I, I think liquidity is something that is earned by an issuer over years, like Ford is a great example. Decades of being, providing a consistent structure, no surprises, right? And, and repeating, repeating into a very good effort and delivering it, then he's rewarded off, oh, I trust it. Right. <laughs> right, I don't have to read the full document because it hasn't been changed. But they also provide information on every one of their deals on the, on the website going back, at, you know, decades. Right. Which is in a consistent manner. Prove their promise. Yes. <laughs> Right. And I think the, uh, the way that John phrased it earlier, I really like in terms of like certainty of outcomes from that perspective. Like when we're in front of clients and they're asking us questions about all of these different non-agency products, yes, there are questions about collateral performance, what prepay speeds have been looking like, what defaults and, and credit look like, but investors and investors in the resi space have gotten very good at pricing those risks. What the, the other set of questions revolves around security, sec security for the investor within the doc. Will the trustee do what the trustee is supposed to be doing? Like, is there a certainty that the structure, which is what Alessandro has been saying, which is what John has been saying, is there faith that the structure will behave the way that the structure is supposed to behave? And that's the, the certainty of outcome issue that I think also needs to be there for capital to fill the gap.